He was almost exactly my height. The tops of his ears were curved downward, strangely, like seashells. His head was vaguely cube-shaped. He was 40 years old. I thought he was a total dreamboat. We met my first week in Guatemala. I decided to go on this trip as a sort of personal rite of passage. I'd called Seattle home for the past few years, and in the long wake of a breakup, was trying to rewrite my gloomy brain pathways via an adventure. I chose Guatemala because I knew it was a place I could afford to stay in for a while, and I wanted to put myself in a situation where I'd be forced to speak another language. Proyecto Linguistico in Quetzaltenango was the school that all my lefty activist friends kept bringing up. The real history focus along with the social projects the school sponsored with all that foreigner tuition, allayed my guilt about being the sort of person who was able to travel for adventure in the first place. The school is run by former guerrillas and their allies, and every seminar and field trip outside our one-on-one -on -one tutoring was a healthy dose of Guatemalan history. I met my teacher, Louise, the first day. He was nice, businesslike. He gave me the placement test and explained the daily schedule to me. Four hours of one-on-one -on -one conversation in the morning with your instructor, and then optional field trips in the afternoon. That afternoon, I found myself halfway up a mountain, crouching with dust crusting up in my Chaco sandal toe sweat on a 45-degree slope. Our tour guide was showing us the bush he used to sleep under when he was a gorilla. I, <laughs> I felt like what I was learning was, was important, crucial. The school of the students choose the course of the conversations, and I found myself asking my teacher, Louise, a lot of questions comparing our respective cultures. We talked about perspectives on living with, one, living with one's parents, sexism, what my old co-op had been like, illegal immigration, heady stuff. Louise told me about having to wear a mask alongside his fellow activists when they did demonstrations against Rios Montt, the US-backed dictator of Guatemala, so that they would be harder for the military to target. A baby crush was born. <laughs> Through our conversations, I learned that the city had an older name, the one it was known by before the Spanish colonizers came, Shayla. Shayla fascinated me. The uneven, narrow streets, structures close together. There were no porches, no flower gardens out front. Every door was locked. Every window had welded in metal bars. In some parts of town, the tops of the cement walls surrounding all the houses were packed with jagged, broken glass to discourage intruders. The walls of the buildings came right to the sidewalks, claustrophobically close. Other than the cemetery, the central park, and the market, there were no public places to hang out outside. But if you had an invitation inside a home or were a student or worker in a particular building, you could unlock the door and it would open into a warm, bright courtyard, red bricks and plants surrounding. It appealed to the introvert lover in me. Just work on getting to know a reserved place and eventually you might be allowed in and all the work would be worth it. This philosophy had not served me in my previous relationship, but I wasn't ready to toss it out yet. When I found out that during his activist days, Louise would go out to the mountains in the middle of the night to drop off food to the gorillas, dodging the military the whole way. Uh, it pushed me to full on uncomfortable crush. I ignored these feelings until one morning when I was attempting to translate some garden variety small talk. And as anyone who has ever studied another language knows, Direct translations do not always mean what you intend. All I did was mention the warm weather and how I was feeling in it, thinking, phew, I'm quite warm. Any Spanish speakers? I, I said, estoy caliente. Not, I'm, not I'm hot, but I'm, I'm hot. He laughed and held my eyes for a hair longer than I expected. What, what was, was that? Then we launched into a conversation about mistranslations. We were allowed to leave the campus for our Spanish lessons as long as we told the front office. When I checked in with the director, he grinned at us and nodded. 
which I found suspicious, but only because I think he should have been suspicious. We went to a cafe and then took a long walk in the cemetery. <laughs> At the end of it, he quietly asked if I would be interested in going to a fiesta familiar with him, AKA the baptism of his niece. <laughs> Woohoo! Who could say no to a party like that? He told me the time and place. I showed up that Sunday afternoon at the huge church by Parque Central and peeked in. No one there. I stood around awkwardly for maybe a half hour. My young person privilege was kicking in hard. I was a hot young thing. Did he actually stand me up? Girl, get over yourself. I looked down at the dirt as I did my final lap around the park. I wandered to my homestay, consoling myself with a choco banana. On Monday, I came in, cheeks flushed and joints loose. I wasn't going to say anything. He didn't say anything. Fortunately, not saying anything has never been my strong suit. When he casually asked me about my many leg bug bites during the break, it burst out. Where were you on Sunday? His eyes widened. I was there. Where were you? So yeah, the timing had been lost in translation. Relieved, we set a new date, and this time it was obvious the two of us were to go on a walk just after the weekly graduation on Friday. We tried to keep it casual, but I know there were several folks on to us. The tour guide, Amaro, whose name when mis mispronounced Amoro means lover, mentioned to me in passing that Louise thinks of me often. Graduation night comes. The students and staff are all singing The Moon Over Sheila Who. After meeting the obligated number of songs, Louise g quietly sneaks out, giving me a nod. I wait for about 15 minutes and tell my fellow students I'm taking an early night. I stand by the gate, thinking to myself about that choice. Part of me worries that people might think it's weird, that I like him. That makes me wonder if I think it's weird that I do, and then I get all meta and start to argue with myself. Eventually, I tell myself to shut up and just go. I, I make a lot of decisions that way. Um, he's waiting around the corner. We start to walk. There's a springing line of energy between us that's a bit uncomfortable, actually. It's like we want to touch each other, but we're not sure how to do it. Also, there really, really is no private space in the city. There are no porches, <laughs> no hidden corners, no parks with nooks for you to nestle into. Parque Central is beautiful, but it's a promenade style sort of place where people intend to be seen by each other. After a couple hours of this, I just, I just grab his hand and duck into some bushes. I mean, like literally, uh, like underneath the shrubbery. <laughs> They're like tiny branches poking our faces and tugging my sweater when I try to lean in towards them. It's fun. So what if the rhythm seems a little off, is, if its tongue like comes in a little sooner than I'd like for it to? I'm having an adventure. We agree to meet the following afternoon. In Guatemala, it's less common for single people to live on their own. People move when they get married, if at all. Louise lives with his family. And I have a homestay. We have a problem. And a solution? Parents and homestay be damned. He tells me he knows a nice love hotel. <laughs> we are crammed on the tiny bus headed to Almolonga, just south of Shela. We get off and walk for a while. Louise keeps looking around. What is it? I said. It's not there <laughs> she stammered what it should be there we look at an empty lot gold grasses <laughs> blowing <laughs> around a flat spot where a building clearly could have been the sun is hot as we wait at the bus stop and we lean on each other <sighs> there are other love hotels but they're in zona once northwest of the city we are determined we wait for the bus to come back i'm trying to stay cheery Having an adventure, I'm having an adventure. My tongue is dry in the mountain air. An hour and a half later, the bus drops us at its last point. We can see the line of hotels deep in the distance. Louise shares the last of his water with me. As we trudge closer, I can see why Louise had wanted to take me to the other one. <laughs> it had been sunny with beautiful mountains and valleys all around. This spot is industrial. Straight up grungy. I'm having an adventure. We go in, face the greasy smirk of the guy in the closet-sized office, and get our key. 
it looks like a storage unit warehouse. Long rows of garage doors facing each other like cemented honeycombs. Every room has a garage door included. <laughs> I assume so no passerbys recognize the cars of patrons mid tryst. We find our garage door and go in. The room is small, just enough space to walk around the bed on one side to the tiny bathroom. The blanket is pilly. The pillows are lumpy. But it looks clean enough. I'm just glad to have a place to sit down. It's the moment of reckoning. We're both a little dusty and sweat sour. Our kissing is tired. Lips mashing stickily. Despite our efforts to remove them, our clothes seem to be struggling to stay on us, pulling back on our clammy skin. Our hands stroke each other like paws. We're like sleepy bears batting at each other. And, unsurprisingly, his penis follows suit. It feels nice, I guess. Like a warm, rubbery summer squash pressing on me. We end up taking a nap. And yes, there was a mirror on the ceiling. While we doze, I ask him other questions I've been holding back on. The really important questions like, what are some slang words for vagina in Guatemala? <laughs> he lists a whole bunch, but I only remember one, sapo, which means, duh, toad. <laughs> this gives me an image of something sitting and grinning quietly in a dark spot before it opens its huge mouth and leaps out at you. I'll take it. The journey back into town was quiet. It was dusk by the time we reached the bus stop. He sat holding my hand. There was a festival happening in Parque Central when we got back. I glanced at the bush we'd been under the night before as we headed in towards the festivities. We walked around again, ate some greasy food, and played Speed, the one card game I could both remember and translate accurately. The conversation still flowed, but the romantic haze was slowly evaporating from around my head. I felt as though maybe I'd tricked him somehow, or tricked myself, but I, I wasn't sure. This was an adventure we'd both definitely wanted to go on. How much data do you need to decide to stick with something or to let it go? This thought pattern was too familiar. It was, it was midnight by the time you walked me to the bench around the corner from my homestay. Looking at him beside me, arms slung over my shoulder and eyes pointed ahead, I felt tender. I knew the door was unlocked right now. There was no broken glass stuck in the cement to watch out for. Or if there was any, it was coming from me and at least I was working on getting it out. He would allow me further in if I wanted it. I knew what to do next, so I leaned into him and said it. The direct translation of my broken Spanish was, I am happy for today, but I never want to do these things again. 